All right, welcome back everyone. <clears throat> Formerly, this is the George James and Associates Research Tools channel. We are rebranding. This is now the Research Tools channel by vocation. So it's the same channel, just a different name. I'll explain more about that later, but basically I've widened the scope of the channel so that we're not only aiming at higher learning, higher education, um, we're also going to be doing some K-12 stuff and some other fun things on this channel. So with that being said, I realized at the end of last semester when I was trying to help students uh, with regression analysis in my real estate market analysis course that I, in fact, do not have on the channel before now a regression video, actually running regression. I do have data cleaning. Uh, videos and this assumes that you've already done your data cleaning and that your data is XR, excuse me, your data are Excel or I'm sorry, your data are regression ready. So if there, are, if you are regression ready and you don't want to use the default Microsoft Excel regression um, or even in the data analysis tool pack because it's, it still severely limits what you can do in regression analysis, then you should check out Regress It. It's a free Excel add in that expands it so you can do more regression analysis in your Excel spreadsheets. So you go to regressit.com. You'll see here that there are resources for students, instructors, practitioners. Um, you can incorporate with R if you know if you know how to program in R. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go to free download. And here you need to download the proper file. So if your dependent variable is dichotomous, which means it only has the values zero and one, right, or any two values, but usually zero or one, then you want to download Regressit Logistic because your dependent variable is, is a dichotomous variable. You are running Logit or Logistic Regression, so you need this file. If, however, your dependent variable is continuous because you are running OLS or Ordinary Least Squares Regression, then you need to download Regressit PC. Finally, if you're a Mac user, download Regressit Mac. All right, so we are doing, um, with the data that I'm going to show you today, we are going to be doing OLS regression. So I, I've already done this, but you're going to click on regress at PC. You're going to go down here and either click on regress at PC.xlam or that you can download it in zip and then extract it. I've already done this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into, um, sorry, I'm going to go to my downloads and then I'm going to type in regress it. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is, sorry, I missed an S. We're going to run the regress at PC. So when you run this, it's going to it's going to have a pop up window, and the pop up window is going to um, it should anyways it should pop up uh, a macros. I don't know why it's not doing that. Let's try opening it with manually. Here we go. All right, so this pop up window is going to show up, and you need to enable macros or else the software is not going to work. And you'll notice here in the tabs, there's nothing after Acrobat, right? There's nothing here or after help. There's nothing here. After we hit enable macros, the regress it tab is going to show up or it should show up. There we go. All right. So now you have a blank spreadsheet with regress it. And I want to sh quickly show you what you want to do. We're going to we're going to implement our data. But the main things that, to realize is you're, we're going to need the select data here. We're going to need the create names. And we're going to need the linear regression, descriptive, maybe descriptive statistics if you want to do those. But you can do that in data analysis, regular uh, tool pack, regular Excel if you want. But we're going to need linear regression. So select data, create names, and then linear regression. So without further ado, then I'm going to come in. Now from here, you again, you go to wherever you downloaded the file and you open regress at PC or regress at logistic if you're doing logistic regression or regress at Mac if you're on a Mac. You don't open the ultimate file that you're going to be using where the data are. You're not going to open that first. You're going to open regress it file first. Then once you're in here, you're going to import the data. So you're going to go file, and then I'm going to go to um, open, and then we're going to go browsing. So I know exactly where I need to go. So I'm going to go to here. Where the data is and here i'm going to go even though i've already done the regression and everything i'm going to go to regression ready so this remember i've said this in a prior video every time you save your data you want to have you want to copy your data over and then save it according to the appropriate name so it's all the same until you get to the very end so here i know 
that, for instance, that this is color coded. This is the very beginning. Then I know that I've switched the names, um, the names out to unique identifiers. Then I know that I've cleaned. Then I know that I removed miners because I couldn't have miners in my data set according to IRB. And then uh, values only. So I've taken out all. I've taken all the characters like race. I've taken words like white, black, etc., and I or African American, and I've changed it to ones, zeros, twos, whatever. Then I made it so I create all the dummy variables, so everything is regression ready in its own spreadsheet. Then I finally have the dependent variable where it's done, and then any robust robustness checks. This is how I do it, and this is going up, right? If we were to do it the other way around, it would go down like this, right? Regression ready and so on. But I like having the latest version up here because I'm commonly sending this to my research partners or uploading it to journals or whatever, and I want to just have the top one ready to go. That's why I always do modified from the uh, date descending in descending order, so newest first. So anyway, regression ready. I'm going to click on that to open it, and then it's going to go here where you see a whole bunch of zeros and ones and everything, right? So final grade is our dependent variable, and then all these, right, all these dummy variables that we've made, right? And some are continuous variables and so on, right? Okay, so we have our master, master data file, and then we're going to have, these are all different models, right? So we have total hours, school hours, outside hours, and so on. Anyway, it doesn't matter, right? I'm just going to come over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure just to verify that everything is in its proper order. There's all zeros, ones, or continuous, which it looks like it is. There's no, there's no like um, white or married or any, any character strings. There's no character strings in the data set that I can see, right? It's all numbers, which is what we want, right? Okay. So now what do we do? Okay. So now what you need to do before you go, we can go to regress it. But before then, what I like to do is I like to go into, into formulas and then name manager. So formulas name manager. Why do I do that? Because I want to make sure there's nothing in here. If there are already variables in here, it's going to mess with your model. It's going to mess things up. So if there's something in here, select it all and delete it. Just delete everything inside of name manager. So once again, when you have your data set open, it's regression ready. You go to data tab and I'm sorry, formulas tab, and then name manager, formulas, name manager. Then you anything that's in here, you're going to delete it. That's fine because we're about to we're about to redo it, so we're going to get a clean slate of variables. And how do we do that? We go to regress it tab, select data. It's going to select everything by default that has a value in the cell, and then we're going to go to create names. And you want to make sure top row is 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 uh, selected. Why? Because it's naming the variables based on the top row, which is what you want, right? That's where your column names are. So you hit OK. And now, if just to check, if we go back to formulas and name manager, now that all of our variables are in here, right? So you just want to make sure, great, all the variables are there. Go back to regress it tab, linear regression. And so now I'm going to explain how you want to set up your model, because this is going to run the regression, and you want to make sure everything's right. Otherwise, it's going to spit back errors. OK, so first off, what's the model name? You can just say model one if you want. Um, and you just need to know what model one means. So name this however you want, right? So what I would do is I did total hours um, regression output, right? Or output or something like that, right? So that way I just know when I'm, because it's going to create its, its own sheet at the end here. It's going to create its own sheet with the regression output. So you just want to make sure that you're when you're you're scanning down here, right? You're scanning the, the sheets. You want to know what this is. So just name it appropriately. Next, we need to put in our dependent variable, which is final grade. It's not African-American, so we're going to drop down, and we're going to go to final grade. I always put the dependent variable in all caps. That's the only variable I keep in all caps, just so I know that's the, right, that's the dependent variable. Okay, so now what we're going to do, because we have all the dummy variables in here, we're going to go to select all variables, but we need to be very careful to, and I don't expect you to, to know which variables in my model that I'm, I'm taking out. But just so you know, I'm taking out freshmen. Um, I'm taking out single, because you have to do one for each categorical variable, right? And I'm taking out Caucasian. Um, I think everything else is, let's see, it's it's um, marital status, check. Standing, check. Um, race, check. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. So... Now you could do like R code only if you if you're going to incorporate with R. You can do all this other stuff um, if you don't want the constant, but you, you need the constant, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna calculate a specific variable, if you're gonna try to forecast a specific a specific scenario, you need to have the constant in there because you need to know where to start, right? On the on the um, 
on the on the vertical axis. All right, so if you're running time series, which we're not, you could select that. You could do correlation matrix, which is good. I usually will check that. Um, I don't check too many of these, honestly. Um, let's see. You can do actual predicted, observed. You can do a whole lot of things. You can do low res or high res. My computer is pretty powerful, so I do high res. Anyway, you can select whatever you want, right? And then you just hit run. And it's going to create this new sheet down here. It takes about 10, 15 seconds, depending, I guess, on your, on your setup, your RAM and everything. And it's going to spit out its own sheet. Here we go. So I did it right next to this one. So OLS total hours and then total hours output. This means the regression output. So here it's going to give you your R squared value, adjusted R squared. And these little things over here, can I increase this? Yeah, I can increase this. Um, the, the, I can zoom in here. All these pluses you can click on and it'll give you more information, right? The top one doesn't really do much. This is your basic table that has, you know, the regret, the, I'm sorry, this has the model statistics, right? How many it fitted, how many were missing, right? The critical T and confident, all that stuff, right? Here is your coefficient, standard errors, and then your ultimately your p-value, right? Which again, remember, 0.05 is what you want. Um, unless you did a one-tail test, then you can have it. You can have your p-values. But yeah, even if you whether you have your p-values or not, if you're doing one-tailed, two-tailed, 0.05 is the cutoff. And then over here, there's another plus that we can expand and here it gives us degrees of freedom sum of squares mean and so on the f stat right whether your model is is significant or not and then somewhere yeah here's the correlation matrix right so it shows you right and again the only thing you're really worried about most of the time is plus or minus 0.8 or more right or less i guess if it's negative but you know what i mean the maximum is one absolute value maximum is one and you're just concerned with absolute value plus or minus 0.8 or more. No, nothing here, even though Word will normally, they'll, it'll take the, um, I'm sorry, not Word, Excel. So regress it, Excel, whatever, will take the largest ones, right? And we'll, um, we'll bold them. But again, this one was close. Junior and senior were really close, it looked like in correlation, which is weird, but it doesn't matter. Um, I don't believe junior, senior, none of these, right? Junior was not statistically significant. Yeah, nowhere near. So it doesn't matter, right? If it's not statistically significant, who cares, really? Yeah, who cares? All right. So anyway, yeah, this is just the very basic stuff, but I wanted to show you how to um, how to use Regress it, download it, make sure you en enable macros, and then remember formulas, name manager. If we were going to run another regression, I would come in here and I would do this, like shift and, and left click, and then just delete everything. Yes, I want to delete everything because I'm going to, let's say I did it again, right? I'm going to go to school hours and I'm going to do my own regress it here, my own regression analysis on this model. So then I go select uh, data, create names, top row, and then I'm ready to go back in here, right? If you don't clear out your variables and if you change, especially if you change any of the columns, it's going to mess things up. So again, formulas, tab, data, uh, name manager, excuse me, and then delete everything. Then you go into regress it, select data, create names, and then linear regression. So hopefully this shows you a very quick, easy, relatively easy way to run regression analysis without limitation. Um, understandably, it will not do tobit regression or probit. But if you, you if you're doing logistic, then you're fine. If you really need to do tobit, then because that that means your dependent variable is categorical, then I would say run OLS and then just do a bunch of the appropriate post hoc tests. Right to make sure that you're not running into any multicollinearity or heteroscedasticity or any other any Gauss-Markov assumption problems. Anyway, um, that's a little bit too much for this video, but again, I wanted to show you how to run your own regression analysis step by step. Feel free to watch this video as many times as you need to, and just be patient with yourself because if you're new at this, it's going to take you a while. Right? I ran through this super fast because I've done it numerous times. If you haven't done this numerous times, trust me, the first time I did this, which I think was in my first doctoral dissertation, um, it took me a long time to be able to do. Actually, no, I didn't do it. I didn't even do it then. I think I did it in my second one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, when I first did it, it took forever, and it'll take you seemingly a long time to do it. But as you do it more and more, you're going to get better at it, just like anything else in life. So be patient with yourself, and that's all for now. Check out my channel. Please like and subscribe. It helps me a lot. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.